my name is Trevor Horn. I run a small architectural practice in East London and I'm going to talk about a building that we, um, we built where we were the developer and um, the owner of, of the building. Um, it was a collaboration between four friends. Uh, we bought the site four years ago and we developed uh, five-story mixed-use buildings uh, for ourselves, which accommodate artist studios, architectural studios, and uh, six apartments. The building is uh, sited in uh, East London at Whitmore Road and Oarsman Road by the Regent's Canal. It's an area that's predominantly warehouse and uh, originally manufacturing. Uh, the site that we bought had um, a petrol station originally and was overlooked on, on, on two sides. So one of the main uh, concerns was uh, rights of light. The building responds to the uh, neighboring warehouse structures. Uh, we saw those as being very simple, um, mainly concrete frame, um, large windows, high floor to ceiling, and we used this as our model for, for the building. Um, we were working with a constrained budget and we developed something that would be fairly rugged and uh, very adaptable. In terms of modeling, the building respects, the, the th on the original side there, there were three plots and the building reflects that. It also uh, re ref uh, respects the neighboring buildings in terms of cornice lines and also uh, stepping down to deal with the rights of lights issues. It's a three part, uh, tripart building with large openings on the ground floor and then large openings on, on the top. Um, in, in analyzing the, uh, the types of structure we could use, working with our engineers, Technica, we came across the Kobiak's concrete uh, system, which is, uh, allows us to have large spans. The artist on the ground floor wanted us an eight meter wide studio, and the Kobiak's allows us to do that quite simply. It's, it's, it's very lightweight. Uh, it's a series of balls in a cage. We originally were going to use the precast biscuit system, but uh, we found out that once the foundations had been laid, um, the, uh, the uh, precast sy uh, system was not available to us. We then had to uh, use in situ concrete of uh, forming and uh, this is only the second time in the UK that it's been used so there was a bit of nervousness about that and we've only got 75 mil where they could actually poker and, and uh, the concrete and get the finish uh, that we were looking for. Um, the Kobiak's balls are also recycled the one I brought over this evening is a red one which used to be one of the seats of, at Wembley Stadium. The construction period was one year and although we had limited budget we, we did use an expensive handmade brick from Holland. So the palette of materials w was, w was limited. Uh, externally it's brick, aluminium windows, um, internally we, we had the exposed concrete soffit, um, exposed concrete uh, um, uh, structural walls, uh, oak flooring, plaster walls, and in common parts we had stone flooring. Um, you know, we had expensive door handles, we had floor to ceiling doors. We, we tried to exaggerate the height, which was three meters for, for the apartments and five meters for the artist studios. Um, the problem was the, um, the uh, precast concrete. 
the biscuits that we're supposed to get which for some reason they stopped making once we got the foundations laid so that was um, fairly tricky um, but in the end it resulted in something much better because the in situ soffits which were exposed um, there's just more life to them there's more irregularity there's more movement it's it's you know you can see it's it's done by hand which uh, just softens what could be a very harsh environment because the, even the apartments if, if, if you look at the images there's quite a lot of volume and, and they're quite rough and ready so uh, have, having that sort of quality in, in the concrete helped also the uh, it was a very wet summer and you, and you can tell um, the colour of the concrete soffit changes as you go up the wetter it got, you know, some of the rust actually um, um, colours the, the concrete, which uh, uh, so many architects think is something we did on purpose to kind of match the uh, the oak on the floor. But uh, happy accident. One of the tricky things about having exposed concrete and exposed soffits was that all the uh, trunking um, uh, it couldn't be run in, in, in the concrete itself because it's the Kobiak system, which is basically like a big aero bar. So we had to run it in conduit on top, but also because we were the owners, we, we created a lease which allowed, which meant that the ownership of each flat starts from the floor surface to the ceiling, and any changes or anything that needs to be moved, uh, the owners have got to uh, get the company, which is ourselves, to uh, to monitor it. What I didn't realize when we started out was the views of the city. And it was only when the crane arrived that I went up. And it's just awesome. The, the, the whole city of London is just laid out in front of you. And you can see that in some of the pictures that we've actually put in. At night, it's just. And all the buildings line up, even the shard is in line. They're all kind of 